I have fresh news today. Shopify has just released two new automations to recover abandoned carts and abandoned browse. These are completely free to use and super powerful. Hey guys, it's the Econ Bull here. And today we're gonna take a look at these two new automations. And I'm also gonna show you how to further improve them so you can have the perfect sales recovery flow. Quick note, at the time of this recording, the abandonment automations are on early access. But if you don't see them on your Shopify store on the automation section, just make sure that you contact Shopify support and ask if they can give you the early access because apparently that works. All right, so let's get started with this. So to access the automations section, you just go to your Shopify backend, click on marketing and then click on automations. Now here you're going to click on create automations and look, these are the early access automations right here. Everybody has access to these ones. They welcome new subscriber, first purchase, customer win back. And I actually have a video explaining you how to use those. And also I have a video showing you how to work with the abandoned checkout. But today we're going to focus on the abandoned cart and also the abandoned product browse. So let's start with the abandoned cart. So we click on it and you can preview here, you know, the automation. And this is a base because we're going to improve it. So let's just click on use workflow and this is the flow. So it starts with the trigger, the customer left online store. Okay. If we click on it, we can actually see more details. This workflow starts when a customer has left the online store. All right. Then what happened after this gets triggered? Well, then it's going to check if the abandonment type is equal to cart because you know, you have the abandonment automation for cart, for checkout and for browse. In this case, the cart automation. Now it's going to wait for four hours after the customer left the store. Then it's going to check if the customer hasn't added another product to the cart. It's also going to check if it hasn't started the checkout. And also it's going to check that it hasn't complete an order since the start of the workflow. So since this workflow started, since the trigger happened in these four hours that it had to wait, it's going to make sure that the customer didn't check out or didn't add more items to the card because if not you're gonna have so many emails sending to the same customer if you don't make this check all right so then also is gonna check if the customer hasn't received another abandonment email in the last 30 days you know not to overwhelm this i'm gonna change a lot of stuff here but i'm just showing the basis after that it's gonna also check if one or more products in the cart are in stock and then after everything is checked and it has waited four hours, it's going to send them this email. Before we edit the email, I'm going to make some changes because I think we can improve this a little bit. So let's go back to the beginning. The trigger stays like that. The customer has left the online store and then it's going to check if the abandonment type is cart. Okay. And then wait for four hours. No, I don't want it to wait four hours. You know, when someone abandons the checkout, you know, you have to remind them a lot sooner. So I'm going to change this. So I click on this and instead of wait four hours, I'm only going to wait one hour. The reason why I'm changing this for one hour is not only because it performs better if you remind them very soon, it's because I also want to send them another email if they don't complete the purchase after this first email. I'm going to send them another email after 24 hours and then another email after three days. You know, just to try to recover that card. The next step, we're not going to change it because it's important that we check that the customer hasn't added another product, hasn't started the checkout. Then the next check, we're actually going to change it because here the automation is not going to send anything if it has detected that there was another automation in the past 30 days. And I think that is a very long time. This is like limiting the power that you have to recover an abandoned card or an abandoned checkout or even an abandoned browse. So you could only try that thing every 30 days and that's just too much time. So I'm going to change that. Click on that and we're going to check days since last abandoned email greater than we're going to reduce that to only one day. All right. Yes. One day only. Okay. Now we're going to check if one or more products in the car are in stock. You can leave that if you want, but I prefer not to put it because even if someone goes for one product and even if it's not available, I'm going to recommend them other products that are very similar, you know, and you might be able to close the sale that way. 
So I'm going to remove that. So you click on this and click on delete. All right. And now you have to attach, you know, then to the next step. And the next step is going to be to send the marketing email. Now let's review the marketing email. We click on it and click on view email. This is the basic email that Shopify, you know, suggests you to use, but we're going to edit it, of course. So we're going to click on edit and continue. So here we're going to change the subject. Normally when it's a checkout recovery, I put something like action required. Your purchase is not complete or something like that. Just to, you know, to get the attention. Hey, what's going on? I didn't realize I purchased something, you know, and then I will tell them, Hey, you need to complete the checkout. But here, since this is a cart recovery, I'm just going to do something simple. Let's put something like hello, and then we'll use one of these magic personalizations, first name. So this is going to populate with the first name of the customer. If Shopify doesn't have that information, it's just going to use a default value. And we'll put something like hello, hello there. All right. Yeah. Like Obi-Wan. Yeah. Hello there. Hello there. Okay. And okay, let's click on save. Then let's put a comma, space, you left items in your cart. And then let's take a look at the email. So here we're not going to change anything because this right here is going to populate with whatever products the customer had in their cart. All right. But we're going to change something here at the bottom. I always like to add a little image here that converts pretty well. It's going to be this image so the customer can envision themselves already with the package on their hands. And we're also going to add a little closing statement here. So let's add an image and we're going to add this thing. You know, that's just something that, you know, some of the values of the brand. We believe that some clothes have the power to motivate and encourage people. So we want you to be motivated, etc., etc. Another thing that you could also add here is, you know, some products that you can recommend them. You just click on product and, you know, just add a few products. Let's just add this one's just as an example. Let's click on add and then you can, you know, hide the title, the price and also make it only two columns, you know, so it's a little bit bigger and you just just have a few of them. I'm not going to do it yet, you know, but let's click on save and this automation will be complete. So, no, we change a few things. We change the time. We change the check if instead of 30 days, we put one day. It still says here 30 days just because, you know, Shopify puts that help text. But actually, you know, if you click on it, you can see that it's only one day. All right. And then we change the email. But what if we wanted to expand this further? Let's also send a reminder email after 24 hours if they don't buy in this same automation. So the next step will be to wait, all right? So we're going to click on output and then create an action, all right? The action is going to be wait. So we type wait and click on that. Now we specify how long do we want it to wait and we're going to put 24 hours, all right? 24 hours. Okay. So wait for 24 hours and then we have to do a few checks. So we click on output and we are going to create a condition check if all conditions are met and we're going to add the criteria now. So we click on criteria and then we click on abandonment and we're going to look for customer has no order since abandonment. We click on that and that has to be equal to true. And that's just to make sure that the customer hasn't already ordered in those 24 hours after we send the first marketing email. All right. We have to add another criteria. So click on add criteria. We're going to click on abandonment again, and then we're going to look for last cart abandonment date. And this has to be less than, and we're not going to add a date. Okay. Because we need this to be a variable. So we're going to click on this little symbol right there, and we're going to click on abandonment, then click on created at. And that lets us check that the last time that the cart was abandoned was before this automation started. Just to make sure that there's not already a newer automation in place that is going to be sending them emails. Okay. There's another check that we have to do just to be sure that we don't overspam the customer. 
So we're going to click on Add Criteria. Again, then we click on Abandonment. Let's look for Last Checkout Abandon Date. And we're going to make sure that it's less than. And then we're going to select a variable, Abandonment Created At. Just to check that there is not another checkout automation, you know, an abandoned checkout. This is a cart abandoned, but let's say that the customer went ahead, you know, opened that email and then actually went to the checkout, but then he didn't buy. All right. That's still going to trigger a new automation, a checkout automation. And we don't want to send them emails from the cart automation when he's already going to be receiving the checkout automation, you know, so these checks are important. We have to do them so we don't spam the customer. Now we're going to send them a marketing email. So we press then and then action. And then we're going to click on send marketing email. Not to confuse it with send email because it's completely different. I actually have a video where I explain the difference between send email and send marketing email. And I also give a lot of tips. So if you're interested, go watch that video after this one. But let's click on send email, marketing email, send marketing email. And we're going to select an email template. Let's just choose any of these templates, for example, this one. All right, duplicate. Now there is a limitation and I hope that Shopify fixes this very soon because right now you remember this is the same email that we used before and here it will show the products that the customer had on their cart. So right now you cannot add it. If I try to click on add and click on product, it will not give me the options to show the products that the customer had in their cart. You know, it's just not available. And Shopify does have that information. They just haven't put it here. It's still on early access. So that might be, you know, one of the reasons. So we're going to have to do something a little bit different. So I'm going to remove that. I'm going to remove this image. I'm going to remove everything right now. You know, I'm just going to offer them a coupon code, you know, to incentivate. And let's click on image. And let's add this image right here, 10% off. Let's add a coupon code. So click on discount. Let's find a discount. For example, this discount right here, you know, something like this. I'm just doing it pretty fast so you get the idea. So we have the discount, we have the image, and we can put something like, hey, come back, here's 10% off, whatever, you know, something to try to recover that sale. All right. This is just so you know. Click on save. So this will be done, but you could also add another action, you know, and put wait for 72 hours and then add another condition and send another marketing email and so on. But I think you get the idea of how it works. Now let's take a look at the other new automation, the abandoned browse. But before, if you're liking this video so far, please give me a like. I will really appreciate it. And even subscribe to my channel if you want to keep up with all these new releases and all the e-commerce content that I'm planning to bring. So let's continue. We're back at the automations page and let's click on abandon product browse. Okay. So let's use this workflow. This is going to be very straightforward, especially since you already know how the other one works. Well, let's just take a look and change a few things. So the trigger will be customer left online store. And see, this workflow starts when a customer has left the online store. Now it's going to check if the abandon type is equal to browse. All right, let's check it out. Check on the condition. Abandon type is equal to browse. Correct. And then it's going to wait for two hours. Let's just change this right now. Let's just only put one hour. Okay. Yep. And then it's going to check if the customer has in view any more products. And if he hasn't added another product to the card, it's also going to check if he hasn't started the checkout and it's going to check if he hasn't completed an order since the start of this workflow. Okay. If we click on it, we can see that customer has no order since abandonment is equal to true. Last browse abandon date is before when this workflow was created. Okay. And so on. Okay. This is very similar to what we already did. Then it's going to check if the customer hasn't received another abandonment email in the last 30 days. We're going to change that. We're going to put one day. All right. We don't want to send so many emails to the same customer every time he checks out our website. 
but we don't want to wait 30 days. With one day is enough. Okay. And then we're going to check if the products are in stock. You can leave that if you want or not. And then we're going to send a marketing email. Super straightforward, just like before. Let's check the email. Let's edit the email. Click on continue. See something you like, and then it will show the products that the customer browse. And this is a special type of section. You see here, when you click on the plus, you have abandoned browse. Okay. And when you click on that, it's going to be, you know, basically it will populate with whatever the customer was browsing. And we didn't have that option. Let me actually show you something. So this is the previous automation uh, that we were doing. So here on the send marketing email here we will have this option because this was automatically populated by shopify when we click on the automation so here if we wanted to add another section we could choose abandon cart but if we go back here and then we look at the new email that we wanted to send after the 24 hours and try to add another section guess what there's no abandon cart option. See, that's what I want them to fix. ASA Pronto. All right. Anyways, we were here, you know, on the abandon browse. Let's delete that. And well, this will be the email. I think it's fine. All right. So I think it's looking good. So yeah, this automation is pretty straightforward. I don't think we have to change anything else. I think it looks perfect. Yes. I hope I was able to give you a better understanding of how these automations work. Thank you so much for watching, like and subscribe, and out.